to Moments with Marianne. I am so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have just an amazing show and guests coming right up. So our special guest today is a dear friend of mine, Lynn Van Prague Gratton, and she's here today to talk to us about her life as a psychic medium, her journey through love and healing, and her newly released book, The Hand Part Two. So Lynn utilizes her unique gifts to bring messages of hope, healing, and love to those who have suffered the loss of a loved one. So I'm honored to introduce my dear friend, Lynn Van Prague Gratton. So welcome to the show, Lynn. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you so very much for having me. I'm truly honored. Thank you. Do you know, we, we've been friends for quite some time, and as soon as I heard you had a book coming out, we had to have you on the show to talk about that. But, you know, before we even get into the book, I really want people to know what an amazing and just talented person you are. And so let's talk about, you know, you as a person and your life and all that. All the, you know, how did you decide or discover you have this level of talentedness, you know? Oh, well, thank you. Well, um, it started... uh Probably my whole life, of course, mm-hmm. but it started basically um, when I was about four years old. I had a couple of uh, incidents that kind of happened that I, you know, with, with lightning and and uh, figures behind the light and everything. And as years went on and as I got older, um, I knew I wasn't of uh, the normal kid, per se. You know, I always mm-hmm. knew there was something different with me. So, um, basically, uh, it really, really, uh, came out. I've been, I've been around it over 40 years, basically. And, um, it really came out, uh, 17 years ago. My husband had passed tragically. And when that had happened, it seems like my gift just skyrocketed. And, um, that's when I went out professionally. And that's when, you know, this all came about. But, um, I knew that I had to get out there and try to, Help people and explain to them um, what I believe is 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 life after death, and um, you know what really happens with that through the experiences that I've had over the over the years. So um, that's basically how it really happened. You know, um, I work for the airlines, and I always used to say, well, um, you know, I have my wings. I was a manager for flight attendants, so I have my wings on my I'm in the heavens, but I guess I just wasn't there. You know, enough where uh, I need to connect with spirit. And I guess the universe just said, well, we're changing everything and we're going to put you in a whole different place. And, and that's where I'm at at this point in time. So your youngest memory of being connected with spirit was you saw light? Yes. Um, uh, I was, believe it or not, and I remember it so vividly, I was at um, um, relative's house and um, I remember... Um, my uh, uncle was holding me, and we were look, like looking. It was a severe thunder and lightning storm out, and uh, we were over there for a gathering. And um, we looked out the window. We were looking out the window, and um, I saw this flash of light, like a bolt of lightning hit the hit the ground in the backyard. And all of a sudden, I thought I saw a figure in the in the lightning. But it was weird because when that happened, it's like I felt this like this 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 sensation come over me as such a little kid, you know. But I didn't think nothing of it. I just thought that that was just the reaction of thunder and lightning, you know. And, um, and it's, you know, I've had different situations in the course of my life with lightning, and it's really, you know, it's really wild. Um, you know, even in my house um, on Long Island, we were sitting one summer night, and all of a sudden a flash of lightning came in one window, hit my Rhode Island railing, and went out my other window. So it was like in an instant, you know. So it's just, it's just it's always been there. I guess they attract it, you know. So mm-hmm. um, so that's where it all started. That's where it all began. So I knew, you know, it was something bigger and better to this picture than what I'm seeing as a child. And about how old were you when that first happened? The first happened, I was about four, four years old. I was about, I believe, about four, four to four, to four and a half, I believe it was. And um, uh, then, as the course of years happened, you know, um, I had gone uh, to a Catholic school, I was born a Catholic, and, um, you know, I would always go at lunchtime, and I would always 
go over to the church. I was doing to go over to the church, you know, at, at all, all the years, of the eight years that I went there. And I would always go, and I was alone. I was always by myself. And um, I would go over to the church, and I would pray, you know, in front of the statues and um, or talk to them, basically, you know, up till my eighth grade, you know, up till those years. And um, I would go back and tell the nuns that the, that the statues talked back to me. Mm-hmm. And they and you're just talking made, about the statues of, like, Mary and Jesus. Mother Mary, uh, yes, St. Therese, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yes, and, um, you know, when you go back to school after lunch and you go back and tell the nuns when the, where you were and you were talking with the of course, you sound crazy. <laughs> so um, I kind of yeah, like Yeah, they're not prepared for that, you know? No, they're certainly not. Not in those days, for sure, you know. So, um, you know, I, I knew I was... I just knew it was different, you know. I knew it. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I did that. And and as a young child, too, I always would find whenever I would be upset or something, I would climb a tree. And I would sit up on the tree. And my mom would call me, and I'd be up in the tree. And she would always say to me, what's with you in these trees? You're always up in the trees, (laughs) climbing. And I'm like, well, I said, I don't know, but I just like to be, you know, up higher, and I like to be sitting in a tree. Well, of course, you know, that that's um, grounding. Who knew that as a child? You know, that's really mm-hmm. grounding when you're connected with the tree. So, um, I mean, there were so many signs as, as my years growing, you know. But, but, again, you know, living in the world that we live in, you know, I didn't look at it like that, you know. And, and spirituality, the only spirituality that we had as children growing up was um, – you know, going to church, going to Catholic school, and, you know, all very regimented, you know, uh, Catholic upbringing. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, fear of everything else, you know, we could never talk about any of what's going on in the world now, you know. So, uh, and I, I, I kind I, of lived in like a fearful life, I believe, um, that I, I lived in a kind of a fearful, you know, fearful uh, upbringing, fearful life, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was always in fear, you know, and never had too many friends. I was always just a loner. I was always by myself, you know, and, and you know, that's just how it, it was growing up. So, uh-huh. you know. And did you and, did you kind of, you know, as you got a little bit older growing up, you kind of, were you surrounded by spirits, or did that come later? Um, I always felt, I always uh, felt there was something around me. You know, I couldn't really explain what it was. Like, I would always felt my grandmother was there, or I felt my, my aunt was there, or my great aunt. I always, you know, I would, I would go to my cousins up in, um, up in Rochester, New York, and we'd go. And again, um, everybody would go and play, and I would be in, in, in like in the bedroom, you know, sitting there kind of like, feeling something around me, looking at pictures on the wall and, and, and getting my weird kind of feelings, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, there was this rocking chair. It was, it was a maroon velvet rocking chair. And as a child, I always felt that my great aunt would be sitting in the rocking chair and rocking. So I would have conversations with her. And then, um, you know, I would go down and tell my cousin, tell her. But when I told my mom or told my aunt, they were like, no, 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 that's just your imagination. There's no, nobody sitting in a rock, but the rocking chair is rocking, of course. You know, but, mm-hmm. but again, my mom had this gift, but I feel that she uh, uh, was very fearful of it again, being in a Catholic family growing up. I was Catholic. And what happened was um, she, I feel that she, you know, she... Uh, Silenced her gift um, because um, she was an alcoholic. So she silenced her gift, and when she would see spirit, I think that she thought that she was going crazy. So, so you know, when I'm talking like that, now she really thinks we're both nuts. So you know, but um, yeah, but I understand all what what happened now as I have gotten older with with my childhood and what had happened with spirit. So well, I, I think I get her. It. For both her and for you, it probably was pretty scary because, you know, with a, um, a certain, you know, if you have a regimen upbringing that mm-hmm. doesn't believe that these things are possible for you to see and hear and communicate with, then it kind of goes against a belief system that's in place. And then, you know, to kind of, she didn't really have anyone that was there to kind of help her along, right? 
Right, exactly. And just, you know, she lived upstate New York and grew up there and then came down to, down to New York City. You know, we lived in a town, out, you know, 20 minutes from Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And she just had herself and her one friend on the block. You know, she didn't have a lot of friends either, you know. She was a, she was another loner, you know. But again, growing up, I didn't know that. And, you know, she kind of thought she was crazy because she, you know, we drank because that kind of subsided everything. And now she has a daughter who's just got it. So it's like, oh, my God, I've seen it going on with her. Now, did, yeah. was her, was your grandmother, was her mom able, did she have any giftedness as well? That was a very silent thing. We didn't know too much about my grandmother. She was very quiet to herself. She was very stern, very, very stern. And um, that was never, ever to be mentioned in the house because mm-hmm. when you talk with stuff like that, that was like the devil's work. That was like you don't talk about those things. You know, yeah. you were possessed, you know, going back in years. That's how it all you know, that's how that was all labeled. Yeah, yeah. So, so we didn't really. Um, so she had any gift uh, level of giftedness. We wouldn't have, have known that. that. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't have known that. Um, but her, but her um aunt, her aunt, which would be my great aunt, um, mm-hmm. like she, um, her name Maggie O'Day. She definitely was um completely gifted. She's the one that would come to visit me in the in the rocking chair. Mm-hmm. Okay, in the rocking chair. Um, I had never met her, but I had heard stories about her in the family dynamics that um, they thought that she was a little kooky because she, uh, you know, she would sit there and speak to to the air, like you know, to to nothing, you know. And they would say, you know, she's she's crazy, you know. But but yeah. we know different, <laughs> you know, we know different. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because when you grow up with a family that, you know, again, has that really strict um, spiritual belief that these are things that you cannot see and it's not okay, it's really, there's got to be this conflict that goes on. And I could see right. why your mother really was, you know, suffering in some ways because it was kind of an internal battle, you know, coming to some kind of, um just like some kind of, you know, level of understanding that what she's seen is what she's seen, but then her belief system as well is pushing her in a different direction. Right, and and I believe that. On my dad's side of the family, of course, um, it was, you know, my heritage is as English such and wealth, and, you know, they're kind of very stern, too. So, um, mm-hmm. my like I said, my grandmother was a teetotaler, but never nothing with tea leaves and nothing with kind of... Um, this kind of woo-woo kind of stuff, you know. It was never, ever, ever mentioned in, in my guy's side of the family. But um, spirituality, in some ways, was mentioned on my mom's, you know, and they would say, well, we have some weird cousins and weird aunts, but, you know, we don't uh, connect like that, you know. So so I knew it was definitely connected there. And, like, and the experiences that I did have over the course of my my growing up years and when I would go upstate too is when um I would really feel such strong connections, you know, and, and that that maroon rocking chair uh is still around to this day. <laughs> In fact I was at my cousin's a couple of months ago and she said, You wanna go downstairs and see the rocking chair? And I said, Absolutely not <laughs> I already have her right with me. I don't need to see the rocking chair, you know. But, um, as, a, yeah. as a kid, did that scare you or was that as a kid, like, yes. I was a little fearful because I didn't know anything about negative and positive energy. So I didn't know if this aunt was there to hurt. I didn't feel she was going to hurt me. I felt she was a pure love, but mm-hmm. it just kind of gave me the, the willies. And um, it was funny because my um, my aunt, uh, my mom's sister, my Aunt Betty, was a nun. And I always remember... Um, you know, seeing her in her habit, you know, and yeah. she she was very spiritual in her own way. She wound up leaving the convent, of course. Once my grandmother had passed, uh, my aunt left the convent because I think she was very spiritually connected also. And she, um, you know, she would always want to dress me up for Halloween and, you know, always make me an angel, you know, and um, she was pretty spiritually connected. So I, I think she kind of understood it also, you know, between her and my mom. So, but um, she had had this picture hanging on her wall. I remember 
and it was um, uh, it, it was probably a relative going way back in the 1800s. And I remember I'd look at that picture and I'd say, whoa, like, you know, how they look so stern and, you know, with the high collar dresses and everything. And I was like, wow. But, you know, so that kind of would spook me. But otherwise, I, I felt um, a level of, um, of comfortness and everything when I really sat by that rocking chair or sat on the rocking chair, you know, so, mm -hmm. so, but that was a big play in, in my upbringing, for sure. Well, it, it's always, I find it always fascinating. Usually when you see, like, a family member that has a level of giftedness, it, it seems to be almost like a generational kind of thing. Yeah, I, I believe, you know, my belief, my belief is we all have it. My, and and um, it's just, you know, God uh, maybe is a little, gives a little more to certain people with spirituality, you know. Others have to develop it even more so. Um, but I definitely believe it's a gift from God or the higher source or the higher power, whatever anybody, you know, does believe. But, um, you know, there was healers and, and, and spirit, you know, in, in God, Jesus' days. So, you know, um, I, I'm a total believer that... Um, I was blessed with this, and um, I'm here to do what I have to do to help people. Yeah. So, That's what it comes about. Well, and I know that um, you have brothers and sisters, too, right? Are you the, you're the oldest, right? Yes, I'm the oldest of four. I have two brothers and a sister. Yeah, so okay. I'm the oldest of four, yes. And yeah. I know, like, you're, um, and when we talk about the gift going down generationally, I know you're, um, like, I think one or two of your sons has this gift. Yeah, what, 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 um, is, it's really wild how it all connects. My oldest son, um, is a musician and he, uh, deals with music, you know, but he sees energy, you know, and, um, what, what his gift is really is going in a different direction. His gift is with music. Um, he's uh, done some meditations with me and some events, and he would sit there and uh, in front of the piano, and what would happen is he would c connect with the energies that are in the audience, and then he would play his music on that vibration. And it's real, and that's how we would do a meditation. So it would be, you know, it would be the audience's personal meditation, you know, and, and then he, he, you know, emails a copy to them. But it's so beautiful how um, the music comes out, you know, and as I'm speaking and the music is just me. So he does uh, see and feel um, absolutely and hear. Um, as I do see here, feel, you know, mm -hmm. uh, clear audience, clear audience. And, and, um, my granddaughter, my daughter now is starting, she, she works with me, so she's starting to, uh, her spirituality is starting to unravel also. And then my granddaughter, um, my second granddaughter is highly, highly, um, evolving, she's in the knowing, she's extremely, extremely smart, she's studying to be a, she wants to be a doctor, and of course that's a healer. But she's, she already knows, uh, she's a real old soul, and she really connects you know, crystal tiles growing up, you know, she's really connecting very strongly. So she will be, we're very close. I have seven grandchildren, but she is very close with me uh, in the spiritual realm. So so she's right Aww. there. Yeah, so it does go down the generations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and how lucky they are because they've got you to kind of help them through this process. When you were, you know, looking at your giftedness, and kind of just discovering that for yourself. Did you get to a point where someone kind of helped you along? How did that go? Well, well, well. What happened was, <laughs> like I said, I went to Catholic school, of course, and then I, of course I met my husband. And you know, all I wanted to do was get married and have children. That was just the best thing to do, you know. Uh huh. So that, so that's what I did. Um, I did travel um a lot. Um. One of my uh, brothers does, does have the gift also, and I did travel a lot. Um, and, yes, I did meet a lot of well-known people, but I don't feel that that really kind of, you know, helped it. I think it just uh, let me know that is, there's more than just me out there with this, this gift, you know. And I met mm -hmm. so many beautiful, 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 you know, people out there, um, you know, and I think that that helped. And that guided me to know that this is 
this is where I need to be. And like I said, after my husband had passed, um, that's when spirit really uh, took me on, on, a, on a higher vibration, a higher frequency, and I was I was definitely uh, connected. I did I did um, do some development classes, um, but it was really weird because when we were talking in development class, it, it's like I was a step ahead already, you know, and it was mm-hmm. really bizarre. It like would just come to me naturally, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I I do you know I do sometimes do some development classes just. You know, because, you know, it doesn't hurt. You know, it doesn't hurt to know what's going on. And um, and that's the really, case. I teach development classes now, so, you know. Uh-huh. Well, it's always good to get more information and kind of learn as you're going, you know, Absolutely. because we all don't have all the answers all the time, you know. Absolutely. So. Right. Right. And, so, and I'm always out there ready to learn. You know, mm-hmm. I'm ready to learn, especially where the world is these days and the way things are going on, you know, and the whole shift of the energy and everything's changing, you know, um, it's always good to keep, you know, your your mind open. I go to a lot a lot of conferences, you know, like from the afterlife, uh, scientific conferences, you know, because, you know, science is really starting to connect now, you know, they're getting it, you know, the scientists and everything. So it's all, you know, merging together, basically, which is beautiful. Which yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a journey with all that. So, yes. you know, you go along and you, you know, get married and you're having a, kind of a normal life. Was the spirit world, was that still kind of, you know, knocking on the door going, hey, I'm here, or, you know, you'd have, you know, deceased relatives that would come and visit you? Yeah, well, what, ha- what would happen, what would happen is, um, uh, I was going on with my life, you know, and my husband, uh, was a total non-believer, <laughs> so it's very hard to, you know, I was going on with my well, life, and yes. He worked for the police department, right? He was a New York City police detective, yes, mm-hmm. and you know how they are very, you know, they, they don't believe. They're very yeah. analytical. Absolutely. And um, we had, you know, four beautiful children. We had a be- thank God, we had a beautiful life out, in, you know, out in Long Island, and, um, and, uh, Everything was going fine. I got a job with the airlines. Again, like I said, I, I, I managed five times I had wings. So I felt that they were always kind of knocking at my door. Um, I did connect with my mom a lot. When my mom had passed, I, I, I saw her spirit, uh, her spirit right away, you know, above, right above. I, I like looked up and then she had transitioned over. I, I, I can, I saw her. And, and I knew it was going to be okay. And she, she, you know, she comes to me, um, uh, not a lot, but, you know, once in a while. Um, you know, I may, she's probably, I don't want to say she's one of my earth guys because I definitely feel my husband is. I feel he's a total earth guy for me. Not that I depend on all that. I have a lot of higher, higher, uh, energies that are there for me also. You know, my, my, uh, masters and anything. But, um, I know that certain things, and you know, spirit, you know, they, they, I believe that, you know, they'll guide you in some way, but the health is really coming from that, that source of love, that highest power, you know, and mm-hmm. that's where it all comes about, you know. But our guides are here to guide us, you know, we have our joy guides, and, you know, those are the children, and, and I connect with that a lot, but, um, I, my husband connects a lot, I mean, I'm always asking for signs and, and, and messages, and he comes through with flying colors right away. And as soon as I ask, um, I almost feel like his energy is always on my shoulders, you know, but I know, you know, it's that, then they move on, but, but definitely, um, he's a helper. He's definitely a helper. He's around. You know? Well, and, and your husband had a tragic passing, and we won't go into that. But, yes. you know, he had a tragic passing, and then I know, you know, after a period of time, you had, you know, your giftedness started to continue to open up, and he was helping you with that. Yes, and, 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 I, and I will share this. You know, the way my husband had passed, um, I knew it wasn't that way. I knew yeah. it in my heart. I knew it. We've had uh, conversations about that. <laughs> absolutely. Well, six mediums yeah. later, yeah. up until the day, uh, a week ago, um, mm-hmm. 
It's validation, 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 uh, coming with name situations. So he wanted to clear his name, and and I'm so happy he did, you know. So that's passed on that. But but during that all, he's really been helping, you know, and, and, and giving you signs. I mean, as a non-believer, the police officer or detective, you know, um, a sign as clear as can be, you know, uh, my daughter had gotten a car a couple of months after he passed, and she had to get a new license plate. And I'm all for license plates, and the license plate said CME, CME 6007. Well, he passed on June 7th, and it changed CME. So, I mean, you can't get better than that. And, you know, those kind of signs are how they come about, you know, and it's like, wow. You know, wow. <laughs> well, and I so. know he's always sending you signs like his badge number. Yes. These things yes. everywhere. You know, when you come out to visit in Colorado, you know, you're always seeing these little signs <laughs> that he's around with you. <laughs> little messages. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I um, my um, brother-in-law had passed in 1980, which was 20 years after my before my husband, and you know, again another tragic motorcycle accident, and. We were always really on motorcycles, and what happened was and my house, I had a friend, and he had a motorcycle, and he had told me, this is going back maybe about eight years ago, you know, sit on a motorcycle. I said, no, I don't like motorcycles. He said, just sit on it. Why well, sit out on it? And I turned around, and of course, I looked at the license plate right away. And I said, oh, my God, your license plate has my husband's field number. <laughs> I couldn't believe the four numbers, yeah, on that motorcycle. So... Mm-hmm. There's no coincidences with the people that come in and out of your life. It's all how it's supposed to be. I I totally believe that. When you were getting these messages from your your deceased husband, were you feeling that that was giving you a lot of comfort and kind of helping you along in your journey to be able to be able to help other people understand that you know this is not it, that there's life after this? Yes, and, 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 and I'm glad you touched on that because I was thinking of that this morning. You know, for when you have a person that just believes, wow, they pass, they go in the ground, they go in the wall, that's it, their ass is in here, boom, that's it, and then that's, that's how it is, and then the grieving goes on. When you have somebody who's enlightened and open and realizes that there is more to it than just that, I think you, I believe that you handle it differently. Yeah, grieving is grieving. So that's, that, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm human. You're human. We all grieve no matter what. Okay. Yeah. But when, when you are opened, okay, and, and you're, you're enlightened and you're open, you, you understand it differently. You know that they're in a better place. You know that they're around. You know that that energy it, you know, is there, you know, uh, you're not just thinking, well, they're in the ground, I'm going to go. You know, I don't even really go to the cemetery that often because I know he's not really there. His body is, but his mm-hmm. spirit is with me and, and with all and with my children. And, you know, so I think you handle it better. I think you understand it better, you know. Uh, it's never better to handle, you know, death, you know, but it's yeah. really not dying. It's really living. There's, there's a quote in my book that says that. You know, that says that about um, about it. Like the day which we fear as our last is but the birthday of eternity. You know, mm-hmm. so so we might feel that we pass, we pass, but yet it's the birthday of eternity. You know. Well, so. you know, it, and we were talking just the other day, and you said something that really kind of cracked me up because that it's so true because the, you know Earth is really where we have the education. And right, you're right. saying, yeah. you know, you're, you're connecting with the dead, but it's the, the living that kills you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I say the living, I mean, they're great. It's so cool to connect with them, but that's it, that's it, that's dead. But the living really knocks you and kills you. <laughs> and I, I feel that. I, I'm more in the ethers than I am on the earth, believe me, because it's a good point, you know. But, um. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it, 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 it gives kind of a perspective. I mean, we're kind mm-hmm. of laughing about it, but it really gives a perspective because, yeah. I mean, being here and showing up, and not just as a good person or someone that's, like, super enlightened, but, you know, being here and being on your path and doing the right thing 
Mm-hmm. You know, regardless what's going on in your life. I mean, it's hard. And it could be, you know, how you communicate with people. It could be, you know, opening the door for somebody, showing a little bit of kindness. I mean, it's not an easy, it's not easy. And for some people, I think, well, that, that should be easy, but it's really not. You know? Right. Right. Well, you're here, this is a school of learning. You learn your lessons. You know, you're learning all your lessons, life lessons. You know, mm-hmm. you, 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 um, and what direction you're going to go. You're going to go to the good side. You're going to go to the bad side. You know, your decisions. But it's all free will. So you just, you know, do it the best you can do, basically. You know, and then, and then, you know, you move on. But, um, you know, it's not easy, you know, going through the, the, the choices that we choose, too, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you look back and say, oh, why did I do that? Oh, why did I choose that, you know? So, um, but if you just, I always say, just go on a good path, like you say, treat people with kindness, mm-hmm. and and um, you'll definitely have a better uh, connection when you go transition to the other side and you go through your life review. <laughs> It'll be a better thing, believe me. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, I mean, we've talked about life reviews and, and all that, yeah. and we'll, we'll get into it in, in this conversation. Right. I've got so many other things I want to cover with you. <laughs> we'll go right ahead, but just spread love, that's all. I'm all about love. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so, you know, so the first time you did, you know, you, were, you had a spirit with you, and you were doing um, like a reading for someone who had lost a loved one. Why don't you share a little bit of what that was like? I mean, do you, do you actually feel it? You know, the okay. smell. Why don't you share what that's like for us? Okay. Get well, I'll, I'll, I'll share a great story. I have great stories. Everybody says, you and your stories. But I do. They're great. They're amazing stories, you know. And, and, and I'm so happy, you know, that I can connect. Mm-hmm. One of the first times, um, one of the first times was I was at a barbecue. And um, I'm sitting there, and I'm seeing this little girl in spirit. Um, and I can tell you exactly how she's dressed because she's, I, I believe she's my joy guide now. Because whenever she comes forth, there's a child that has passed. So, um, so, uh, she has a little pink dress on with little patent leather shoes and, you know, and that was my vision of her and, and, uh, socks and this, a pair and a page point. And I see her. I see her, um, I can see through her, translucent. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I see her energy going back and forth, but I see her in the vision. So I asked anybody at the table if they lost anybody at that age, age range, and they said no. I said, well, that's really interesting. Well, she's here. So I go to Chicago, and I go to uh, an event in Chicago, and um, I'm sitting with these three women, and my friend came with me, and uh, I had told my friend about the little girl. So I'm sitting with these three women, and they said, oh, can we meet after for tea or, or, or a glass of wine or tea or something to talk? And I said, sure. So we went about our business. We come back, and the one woman went outside, and there's, there's about 3,000 people there. And this mm-hmm. one woman goes outside, and she meets this other woman. And she tells, tells her who she's with. The woman comes in. And um, long story short, there's no mileage between spirit or anything, but they will connect me with who I have to connect with. And what happened was um, I see the little girl again, and she's there around this table, but I'm sitting there with the women, and uh, I said, wow, somebody has, I'm thinking, in my thought, somebody here had lost her. She yeah. was a child of somebody. Well, this woman who came in, you know, odd man out, there were three, now there are four, comes in, we start talking, and um, I just started asking her, um, you know, did she lose a child? Because um, I described the child to her because I had her personality. I saw her. I felt her energy. So, you know, I sense her sense, you can sense it, you can avoid your feet, you mm-hmm. see. And, um, and I just felt her personality. And I described her, and she starts crying. She goes, oh, my God, that's Lulu. So I said, Lulu. And she said, that's my five-year-old daughter who went in for a nap and never woke up. And I said, well, she told me to show you, for you to show me her picture, because I heard her tell me her photo, her photo. Mm-hmm. So um, she impressed that thought on my mind. I asked the mom. The mom shows me the picture. 
the picture is exactly the vision of the little girl. The face, the hair, yeah, exactly. Everything. Everything. So, so, um, that's how I see, I, I see. A lot of times spirit will come to me through a person, to me the personality, give me, give me, um, a lot of times the face is like of a white mist. It's not mm-hmm. a clear, clear face, but I do get like the personality and the laughter or something that will validate to their loved one that it's them. You know, something, it's a knowing. It's just that knowing, you know, that it's them. Well, and did it take you a while to really trust what it was that you were getting? Because I think a lot of people, when they start to see, or maybe they saw as a child and then they shut it down and then it starts again, then right. they really have a hard time trusting. Kind of like how you were talking about how your mom felt like she was going, you know, like nuts. Because you would think that you would need a padded room as you start seeing people walk around and talk to you who other people can't see, you know? Right. Well, that big word is trust. That is a big word. In fact, it's funny you say that because I was uh, conversing with somebody this morning who uh, was one of my students, and the biggest thing I would tell her is trust, and now she's out there and she's helping people. So, and we haven't talked in a while, so I was so glad to hear that she did. She finally, you know, gave up because she trusts. Yes, trust is a big thing. A lot of times you might think, I'm going a little crazy. Maybe I'm thinking it's that. Maybe I'm thinking it's this. You know, um, uh, trust, a trust. 9-11 trust. I, I saw 9-11 before it happened in a different way, and I told some people, and they, of course, said, uh-oh, she's losing it, you know, and then a week later, I'm sorry, two weeks later, it happened. You know, I didn't see 9-11 as 9-11. I saw it as um, uh, fear for the United States because I felt that there were missiles pointing towards the United States. That's mm-hmm. what I felt. And then two weeks later, it happened. So, and it was from, and it was from a, um, a country over... I was landing in Istanbul when I got, not the big ones, but that's where I was landing when I got that feeling, you yeah, know. That so that knowing, yeah. Uh, and, and even the day before I was flying down to, Den- to Dallas because I worked for the airlines and the going to a meeting, and I turned around and I said to my girlfriend, wow, I fear for the United States, and now I fear for the Statue of Liberty. And she looked at me like, well, because you were flying right over it the day before, and sure enough, what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just to share, a couple of weeks ago, they had that bombing in London in the subways. And we, the same girl I was with, we were going into Manhattan for a meeting, and we were in the subways. And I said, you know, I, I, these subways, man, there's something about these subways. And, and I just feel that that's where something's going to come down. Sure enough, I get, I get home, and I hear about the London subways. So when I speak... I see a button. You better listen because they give me a lot of great messages, you know. Well, it is it's really interesting because, you know, when these things happen, it's like, who do you go to tell about this? There's exactly. really nobody. Who can I go to say, say, yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, is like you would almost, you know, they wouldn't believe you. And if they did, you know, then you'd have to really focus on getting more information, too. Because exactly. it seems like a lot of this still is in play, you know? Exactly. It's like, but it's like going to the nuns and saying, and they go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Although they used to say to me, just now, now, I do believe they would believe, believe whoever comes to this. On that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. You've been listening to Lynn Van Prague Grattan on Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages. The highly acclaimed and newly released book, The Hand Part 2 by Lynn Van Prague Grattan, describes the journey between a psychic medium and a family who lost a son. Messages from Beyond Eternity's Gate is of love and healing. For more information, visit www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. That's www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. 
Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. So today we're here with my dear friend, Lynn Van Prague Gratton, who's a psychic medium. And she's here today to share with us not only her life growing up as a psychic medium, you know, the journey that she's taken through love and healing, and also her fabulous teas, which we'll talk about later during the show, but also her newly released book that just came out yesterday. So Lynn, I mean, a lot of things have changed in how people view psychic mediums. It's, gosh, much different in the 70s where a lot of that information was kind of frowned on when you would tell people, you know, hey, I could see spirit or you can communicate with spirit. Nah, that doesn't happen. No, that, you know, normal people didn't think like that. Now we kind of flash forward, I mean, because I know you personally, and I know all the great work that you do, and gosh, every time you're out here in Colorado, and we've, we've worked together and heard about the events that you've done and the different things you do out in the New York area, and really all across the U.S., you've been all over yeah. the place, yeah. you know, yeah. having yeah. workshops. You went I'm blessed. Blessed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're blessed to have you. you know, uh, so when when someone is um, when we look at all of this and we're looking to like if someone wants to be involved in um, one of your group sessions that you do or one of your events, why don't you explain a little bit of what that's like so people can get an understanding. Of, because I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding when it comes to, or, or just, you know, erroneous thinking when it comes to people who are psychic mediums. Like, you know, they think, oh, they're looking everyone up ahead of time on Google, and like, who has time to do that, you know? Right. And basically, do you have spirits that really kind of, they're all standing in line, but why don't you share a little bit, like, what it's like for you sure. when these events yeah. happen? Okay, so 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 first of all, yes, I get that a lot. I get when I do I do a lot of I call it spiritual house gathering, mm-hmm. and I get that I don't get that a lot anymore. But I used to get where when I would come up come and give them this information, they say, "Did you Google me?" So I said, "Well, who are you? You know, I don't know who you are. How can I Google you if I don't even know who you are? You know?" So so that that's the first question they always say, "Did you Google me?" No, I really didn't, you know. Um, I, I would ask, should I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, maybe I should, you know. <laughs> but, um, but what happens, what, what happens, a, a typical, a, a typical day of how, how I go about that is, of course, meditation in the morning or meditation before the event, um, you know, and I, and, you know, say, we'll, we'll say, like a, a big event you're talking about, or you're talking about, like, I just came back from Chicago and there's about, I don't know how many people there were. There were a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But, but, um, a big event, um, 
what, how, how it works for me is when I meditate, say my prayer, and ask for any message to come through, to come through for, for those who I am, I am touching for their highest good. That's how I, how I start my, my whole, my whole, uh, I have my whole little situation mm-hmm. there. So yeah. I ask for the highest good. So when I do a house gathering of like 10 to 12 people, um, every person gets a, a yin. They are touched, okay? I ask spirit to connect with them. Those, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, well, that one didn't connect with me, so no. I said, no, 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 no. I said, those who come forth to you are either ones that need to get a message for us. I said, you're here. There's no coincidences. You're supposed to be here. Uh, my belief is that spirit connects um, connects me with who I need to connect with, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, to give you an example, okay, I was in Chicago, and there was this woman in the audience, and her son came through, and he came through amazing, and, and uh, he just gave her validating messages, and she felt so healed, she told me after and everything else, and she comes out to me after and she says, I need to tell you something. And I said, yes. And she said, I went to the best of the best. She says, I went on cruises. I went here. I went, yeah, I, for years, for 10 years, I've gone to the best of the best. And my son never came through. He came through to you tonight. So that touched my heart. I said, well, a lot of times my belief is spirit will come through um, cause I am true love, and I'm not saying anybody else isn't. Any, you know, anybody is. But I guess he chose my energy to connect with his mom, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I was blessed with that. And that means more to me than a trillion dollars, you know, to know that that boy came through and gave her such validating messages and to let her know, you know, about him. And he, and he really gave her a powerful Stuff that was coming out of, out of my mouth was like, oh my god, that'll come. But she said, no, right on, you're right on. So, um, so that's that's special. So it's not that I chose that way and said, oh, I'm going to read her and see what comes through. I feel the spirit touches my heart and connects with me through that vibrational energy, and then I connect with those who they want me to connect with. And I, like I said, at a house gathering. Energy comes to each one of them. But in big groups, a lot of people get upset because they all want to come. They want to read them. They want to touch them. But a lot of times it might be a word or something that you say to somebody else that Mm -hmm. that loved one is trying to let them know, you know. And I just tell them, I don't ask you to believe. I just ask you to be open. And if you're open, then you'll receive. And you'll receive what you're supposed to hear, you know. And that's how it all works. Yeah, I've been in quite a few of the events that you've done, and it's been just amazing. I can remember having a woman not – she was thinking – I think she was sitting a few rows in front of me, uh-huh. and you had talked to her in regards to – she had connected to – I can't remember who's her mom or dad, but it was a loved one. It was one of her parents, and mm-hmm. – they had given her something, you were able to see what it was, and it was a charm bracelet that had horse heads on it. Like oh, yes, yeah, I remember that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was very interesting because, I mean, she had to actually pull that out of her jacket because it was on her arm and the jacket yes. was covering it. You couldn't even see it, you know, yeah. but she had to pull that out just to, to show and say, well, yeah, yeah. You, you were like, well, didn't they give you – like um, jewelry with the horse heads, and, and she was so shocked yeah, that you yeah, had yeah, had yeah. Uh, pulled that, you know, yeah. had pulled that information, and much and much more importantly, not just the confirmations like, hey, your aunt or excuse me, your mom right. or dad or nothing is here, right. but they right. have this message for you that's personal to you, right? And you know what I tell them, you know. I, I don't do the Mary and John thing because everybody has a Mary and John. I I I, I am not. I, I I believe I'm not. Gen, I don't. I'm not. Gen, I don't generalize anything. Um, mm-hmm. I go with spirit Disney. And funny story. I was when I was in Chicago last week. I thought this was the funniest thing yet. They give me names. Sometimes they give me the first and the middle name. Sometimes they give me for validating things. Well, I said. 
who lives on Longwood Avenue? And uh, who lives? Wait, it was funny. It was a gentleman. It was a father energy. His name was Ben, and he said, "I live on I lived on Longwood Avenue, and I'm in Chicago. I don't know anything about Chicago. Well, don't you know this woman that stands up?" <laughs> I just, oh are you kidding? I said, wow, this is great. So it was a dad, so a dad who who lived on Longwood Avenue, who was a, who was a trucker, who drove, and he says it would only be him that he would always be talking about directions when he was alive and the different streets. And she said she couldn't believe that when I said Longwood Avenue, because that's where he lived, and she says it only would be him that he would come through with that kind of message. And with a street name, and I says, "Wow, this is getting crazy." <laughs> now they get to where they live, so when they were here on the earth. So I thought that was pretty cool too. You know, it's like holy mackerel. You know, that was it came kind well, of at me. I was staring at me, "Wow." Well, and yeah. you just never know what you're going to get, which I always find very fascinating because it can be anything. It could be addresses, jewelry. Absolutely. It could be a saying. It could be a song. You name it. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's just it's so amazing, you know, and, and that that amazed me, you know, and and, 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 and it's funny when I get amazed. <laughs> you know? And it comes to me something like, Oh wow, that amazed me and they all look at me like, Oh, this is happening all the time I go, something I mean, come on, name, middle name, address, I mean only natural, you know. So yeah. I thought that was yeah. cool, you know. Well, and so you know, and part of the reason we have you here is of course to talk about you know, all this, you know, your wonderful life and how things have progressed and how you've gotten to the point that you are. And the other part is because you have a new book out. And I'm yes. so excited about that. <laughs> Me too. I am too. I would never have thought this in a trillion, zillion years that I'd be talking in front of hundreds of people and I would have a book. I would say, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, because yeah, I, I know you're so down to earth and, and so yeah. it just kind of seems like such a jump. Well, do you know, and so um, why don't we talk a little, because I know your book is part two. It's called The Hand, and it's yes. part two. So why don't you share a little bit about how you this book even became into being and how you met the people that started part one of The Hand? Absolutely, and I'd love to. Well, first of all, I had um, an idea Years ago, I wanted to write a book. I wanted to write a book of, you know, it's not really about me, but about me and my life, and my life, and the different, you know, ups and downs, because a lot of people, you know, would connect in, in that way, growing up in the 50s and 60s, and, mm-hmm. and growing up, you know, uh, in different situations in my, you know, in my life, and, um, and I wanted to write a story about me, and then I write a lot about my different, um, Situations that happen, you know, they're just amazing things, and I'm sure everybody has it, but I just wanted to share it because it was just so mind-blowing sometimes. And um, the universe is so, just so beautiful because they are putting people into my life and putting things into my life that if you trust, there's that word again, trust, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, if you trust and you believe, then know that um, you can manifest it and it's there. So what was happening is spirit was giving me different people that are coming into my life that are supposed to be there. So I had gone to a house, uh, a house spiritual gathering, and um, and what's there, a house spiritual gathering for? A okay, reason? so what what, a, how, what my house spiritual gathering is? I guess for um, about ten to twelve people um, at somebody's house. I go to people's houses. And 10 to 12 people, we all sit around in a circle, and um, Spirit comes through and I give reading. You know, mm-hmm. touch, touch each one with a, a short reading. Yeah. So what happens is um, I touch this gentleman and his wife, and um, after the after everything's over, they come up to me, and they said they were, you know, they kind of like, well, wow, this is, you know, this is so beautiful. You, you were spot on with all of everything that we were here to for and everything and we really enjoyed tonight and we would love to go out to dinner one night. Mm-hmm. And I've been invited out to many, many a dinner, but you know, being where you are at my point, you have you know, it it you know, first of all if you keep going out all the dinners and we really roll them around and <laughs> second of all, second of all, um, you know, um I have to be 
very cautious. Um, you know, I love my, you know, the people that I connect with, but I got to be very cautious too, because you know, who knows? You know, a lot of times there's people that want to take advantage of you or or use you well, for some other gotta situation. Be... It's got to be also sometimes energetically draining to exactly. be doing all that kind of work and to be out there. So I can understand how dying, uh, like having downtime would be so important. Yes. And, you know, and that's why I'm very particular who I go out to dinner with or who I spend some time with because you're right. They will drain. Some people will just, I, I call it, you know, it's like a, a psychic vampire. They drain the heck out of you and you can't even... You know, forget about it. So, um, I'm oh, well, very they don't really intend to either. They just don't absolutely know. not. But I'm so sensitive that I'll just pick it up and I'll start, you know, I'll start going on with it. You know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what happened was um, we wound up going to dinner, and we chatted and talked and everything. It was a you know, beautiful night. Like, beautiful, beautiful couple. Beautiful. Uh, they're so in love, and they didn't. They've been married forty something years, and they're just. It's like they just got married. Just. And uh, he's a retired lawyer from New York, New Jersey, and um, very, very smart. You know, one of my frames of reference when I saw him there, I saw Einstein off him. So when I see that, it's usually scientist or somebody who's very, very, very intelligent. You know, yeah. yeah, very, very. So what happened was um, we had a beautiful dinner, and um, he he said, since he's met me, he's written a book. And I said, oh, that's beautiful. He said, I've really written 10 books in seven years. I said, wow, that's awesome. So he says he felt that it was like channeled to him. I said, that's so beautiful. And then it was so weird. I said, wow, I'm almost feeling, he says the book he wrote, um, I inspired him. So I said, wow. He said, you know what? I said, you know what? I feel like I have to spin off your book. So he looked mm-hmm. at me. Now, my book that I was writing <laughs> that I intended on writing was of my life and everything else, like I had said before. Um, well, the universe had something different planned. So <laughs> we completely went from my book that's almost finished, which will come out eventually, um, that book, but um, we went to where it's going to spin off. Well, lo and behold, um, I started writing and writing. Um, I, I read the transcript of his book and everything. I started writing and connecting and got it and this and that. And so my book picks up, his book ends in uh, chapter 49. My book starts at chapter 50. My mm-hmm. book continues from his book. And it's a fiction, nonfiction because my book has a little touch of my life story. Um, my husband's alive. The children were back in the 60s. You know, um, time has changed, and um, it's just, it, it's like, if you're in a, it, it, it reminds me of the This Is Us story, because it takes, we have some stuff that we have now that's back in the book and from then, so it's like mm-hmm. back and forth. Yeah, what's the premise of the first book? The premise of the first book is there's this young man who uh, was born with part of his, um, uh, his pinky digit finger missing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he was a very smart boy, and he went, uh, he he went to um to different places, uh, past life. He felt past life, so we went. Well, to- we don't want to give the whole book away, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, but it doesn't affect past life. It doesn't affect correct. Why it's called the hand is because part of his pinky is missing. That's all I'm going to tell you on that. Okay. Then it comes into my book, <laughs> and, and then um. And it really, it shares a lot about your story and just kind of yes. who it is that you are. And I, yes. you know, I think that's just absolutely fascinating because it's so much of your journey, you know, that goes along as well. So, gosh, yes. you've got to be excited because your book just came out yesterday, you know. Yes. So, yay. It's a book of healing, too, Marianne. You know, it's, it's healing. It's, it's, it's definitely a book that people will get a healing uh, understanding from, so it's not just, you know, all about me, that, yeah, it's a real, it's a dynamic book, and it, it just came out yesterday, and I'm so excited. Oh, you gotta be yeah. very excited, and I hear it is just flying off the, sh- I the hear it's just flying <laughs> off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's beautiful, no, but I just feel that, um, it, it, it's a different kind of book, and, and I'll tell you, don't be surprised if you have part hand, uh, hand, the hand part three. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. the same. The same. Coming up, you know. Coming up, you yeah. never know. You never know because um, it's an inspirational book, and um, I, I really, I, mean, I started, it's funny, when I started to read my own fan skit, once I got it on the paper, I was like, wow, I'm really, I didn't want to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny for your own book, but it was pretty, it was pretty mm-hmm. interesting, so yes. Well, and so, I mean, so you've got the book, and and so what are kind of, I know we kind of hinted a little bit that there might be a part three, and I think that's yeah. exciting as well, and you've got, you've got your other book that you've been working on for some time, and I, I know when we look at um, having our own journey that we're sharing with people, we want to be really, you know, take our time with it and really involve everything that we Absolutely. want to include in that, you know? Right. So, what, where do you see yourself going from here? From here? Okay. Well, first of all, I, um, I'm very happy with the book. And it's not, it's, I didn't write the book or write any other book or any book. I didn't write it just, oh, I want to be an author and I want to write a book. Um, it just came how the universe planned it, okay? So, mm-hmm. yes, well, I do another book, I'm sure I will. Um, if, if that's, you know, I live by the, whatever, whatever spirit guides me. Um, here, um, wherever they guide me, you know, if, 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 uh, a TV show comes down the road or a movie or something like that, um, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm not a person who's like, oh, I gotta have a TV show, I gotta have a movie, or I gotta have this. No, no, I live how, how spirit wants me to. And, and, you know, if that's meant to be, then that will happen. You know, it, it's all been happening the way, they're directing it. I'm not directing the show here. I'm not in charge. I'm not in control. You know, I know universe. you say that all the time. At, at I'm the not. Time and, that. and yeah. yeah, I mean, they put producers in my life. They put they put people in my path. You know, that are coming to me. I'm not looking for it. You know. So yeah. and and so we'll and see what it becomes. Time. Yeah, who knows? You know, who knows? I have a lot of great ideas, you know. But um, but and again, I always say, people, you know, they say it's really not about the money; it's about the message. It's really about getting that message out and and getting that love out and that feeling and and you know, just letting people know that you know they're going to be okay. You know, and everybody grieves in their own way. No matter, you know, no matter what, everybody grieves and nobody can tell anybody how long to grieve. You know, we all, we all grieve in our own way and to the length that it has to be. Well, and I've I've been at events where I've seen people come in and Mm -hmm. events of yours where people come in and they're so, you you could tell they're just wrought with grief. It's just, it's like a cloak, a heavy cloak that they're wearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And getting those messages really it from their loved ones have passed have really it just shifts the energy completely where I think it, you know, from what I've seen, they they are they like walk around like the cloak is on and they have hope. Yes. And and, and they and a lot of people said to me, um, you know, they would come in dreary and everything and mm-hmm. and, and they say to me, Oh my God, you you're such a life changer. You're a life mm-hmm. changer. And I look at them, and, and, I, and I, I, have a, I used to have a hard time with that. You know, it's not me. It's really, I'm just, you know, the messenger. But, um, but you know, really that, that's a beautiful yeah. thing to hear. Yeah, and that's so beautiful to hear that, that here they came in so downtrodden, and then they walk out, and like you said, they have hope. You know, yeah. the light's shining just a little bit more, you know. And, um you know, and, and there's skeptical people and there's non believers and, and you know what? Everybody goes on their own journey and you know, I believe I'm doing what I'm supposed to be here to do. I I I know there's no doubt I have about a gift. that. <laughs> yeah, and I know I have a gift and I'm here to help and I'm I, I like we always say I'm from the heart and you know, um I'm pure love and, and I will give that pure love out, you know. Mm-hmm. That's you know, where I come from. That's you know and hopefully well, my and children and grandchildren are picking, you know, picking up that fuel love. They're doing great, so. <laughs> so that's good, you know. Yeah, well, and, you know, it, it really is a place where people can come and get some answers, get some peace, and be able to really feel that they're having a healing, whatever that looks like for them in their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Whatever, whatever, whatever helps them their own way, mm-hmm. you know. Whatever helps them, you know. 
just to know and to hear. And again, you know, we don't want to give away too much of the book. I mean, mm-hmm. I've got I've got my copy in Kindle, and I've ordered mm-hmm. the book itself. I can't wait to oh, get my hands you. on that. Yeah. Thank you. So, what what do you want the readers to take away from your book? Um, what I want them to take away from the book is to real. I mean, part of the book is also, you know, uh, again, it's 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 um how I understand, but there's really something more, more to transition to the other side than a lot of people believe, you know, Mm -hmm. and just to take, take away that, um, there is hope, there is healing, you know, and there is understanding and knowing this, you know, and, and know that they're around and they're with you, you know, look for the signs, that's one of my biggest things is signs, you know, um, uh, I said this the other day, and I just share it on here, where my husband was an avid Beatles fan, and I always ask him, wow, is, is, is the book is done, the book is finished, everything I put in it, is, uh, do you agree with that? Give me a sign, let me know. Not that I'm going to change it now, but <laughs> it's in print. But, um, and he's an avid Beatles fan, and I get into the car, and the song Paperback Writer comes on. I mean, these are the signs. These are the things that give us hope and understanding and know that they're around. And they'll give us messages, you know, and they'll let us know. They'll give us answers. They're speaking from the other side, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, that's, well, that's, and I've seen, I I've seen you um, <laughs> relay information that there's no way, I mean, I've heard people say there's no way she could have known this. This is a private yeah. conversation yeah. between me and my mom or a friend of mine or this is a, a pet name someone used to call me and there's no way that you would have known to right. this information and right. so when when this is relayed to the people who are sitting in the audience or sitting in your groups mm-hmm. or maybe doing a one-on-one session with you it's really interesting because they're able to get that that hey you know I'm not alone and there's more to all of this exactly exactly and that and that's what's special, you know. That's what's special about it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I also um, we, we just want to share, you know. I have my spiritual keys, and and what how I how I um, relate to them with this is, uh, you know, they they always want me when I when I go to their house or we do events, mm-hmm. they want me to they want me to stay stay talk to me because they feel you know they're connecting with their their loved one. They want that connection. And I always say, um, now I came out with these keys, I said, well, have a cup of tea. I said, with me, we'll have a cup of tea, we'll talk. I said, and then tomorrow, have another cup of tea, and I won't be here, but it'll bring you back into that moment where you were with your loved one, you know, because they always want me to stay with them. Well, that will bring them back and let them feel that that energy is there and their loved one is there. You know, and, and, and um, what they're really wanting too is not only for you to stay, but they really want to still have that connection with that loved one. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, um, I'm noted for my hugs. <laughs> <laughs> you are the girls in Chicago, yeah. yeah. And, and, and they said when I hug them, and I feel that when I hug them, I feel that it's that true uh, essence of that love that's coming from my heart through to theirs. From their loved one, and that really that hug is from them. It's not from me. It's from their loved one. You're kind of channeling yeah. hugs there too, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got channeling hugs now. That should be the name of my next book: channeling hugs. You know, channeling but, hugs. But, <laughs> but no, I've been told that many a time too. That when I hugged them, they felt like it was great. it was their son hugging them or their mom hugging them, you know. And and I give that that intention, you know. That's what you know. That's what it's supposed to be. For sure. And is, a, is another reason that you have the book the way that you do is so people can also get an understanding a little bit of what your life is like? Yes. Yes. I, I, it touches on my life a little. And, and, and I want them, you know, to know that, you know, you know, I'm, I, I'm not your, um, mother knows best, a lady with the, with the, with the apron and the whole bit. Yes, mm-hmm. I raised my family. I, I, Although my, my son says to me the other day, Mom, I, I don't want you making dinner that much. I said, are you kidding? <laughs> I make dinner every single night. I was like, what? It's like, how did you eat? Forget. <laughs> no, I, forget. I was like, is he kidding? 
I can't believe you said that. But, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you get older, you forget things. It's funny. I, I remember cooking. Look at the pot. They so have the burn marks on it now. Yeah, but, um, now it's going to be his turn to cook with a comment like that, you know? Yeah, really. <laughs> but, um, but, no, but, um, you know, I, I believe that um, I raised my four children um, with respect. I raised my grandchildren. I hope they have respect as they do right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I just believe that, um, uh, you know, I put a lot of that in the book because that's how I will, you know, you know, I was, we were family. We were a family, yeah. you know. We were well, a and family, I think you know, a lot family. of times what happens is, is people kind of get confused. They think that because you know, you can connect your psychic medium, you're so gifted and you can connect to the other side, that your life is easy, it's peachy king, it's tough, but you're having to go through all the same human things that the rest of us have to go through. Absolutely. I'm not any different. I'm not a big celebrity that's all this and that. I have the aches and the pains and the hurt and the sorrows just as anybody else does, the finance and woes, different things. We all have it. You know, because that's all, all how we, we, we learn, we grow, we get strength from the, from the, you know, horrible things that happen to us and everything. So, but again, you know, we, it gives us strength. And, and again, I always feel there's no coincidences. So when things happen, they always happen for reasons. And we, and sometimes we look back and say, wow, why would that, why, why, why? Well, we chose that. We, we contracted that. That's what we needed. We need to grow. And that's yeah. how it all happens, you know. Um, I'm not different than anybody else, you know, yeah. and none of us, you know, we're all, we're all on the same level. You know, there's not one medium that's better than the next or one, 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 uh, scientist that's better than the next or one doctor. We're all equal. We are all equal, you know, and we're, we're you know, we're, we're uh, all, and you, you know. may have somebody that might have maybe a greater, um, sensitivity or greater giftedness in one area. But we're all gifted in different absolutely. areas. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're all special. We're all mm-hmm. special. It's not just one of us or any. We're all special. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. There's no doubt. No so doubt. Let, let's say that someone is kind of feeling energy and has been kind of going, gosh, you know, I can kind of feel a little bit of energy here. I feel like I'm developing energy or I'm seeing things or I'm able to communicate what is some advice you want to give them? Because I know that you've also got some workshops that you're going to be doing coming up. Um, yes. You know, and so yes. what's some advice you can give them? And why don't you talk a little bit about some of your upcoming workshops? Okay. Well, first of all, um, <clears throat> advice, first of all, um, my main word is trust. That's what I give. I mean, I had a young lady yesterday, and, I, you know, I was explaining to her, um, First of all, it's almost like when you're ready to start your spiritual journey, you'll 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 go. You'll know when you're ready. And you could be ten years old, you could be twenty, you could be seventy. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's what Brett, the gentleman who's worked with the book with me, is. He said, "I have I have my wife, my love of my life. I have my 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 business. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm financially set." He says, I have all that. He, he said, I have all that. He said, but he said, now um, you inspired me, and now it's my, my spirituality that I want. And then he's an older man. Yeah. So, you know. Well, and, um, and, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, as people are growing and developing in, with their own gifts, you know, it, it, we kind of look like people are like, well, I don't want to be woo-woo, you know. I'm, I'm an attorney. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm, you know, I have a professional job. I don't want to be woo-woo, but it's okay if I trust my intuition or my gut, which is kind right. of the same thing, you know. Right. Well, it is. And, and I always say trust your gut, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were talking about the workshops. Yes. Well, like um, psychic development, one, two, three, we're all intuitive. You know, mm-hmm. it's how you develop it. It's how you develop it. You know, you can develop it. You know, when the yeah. phone rings, oh, that's Joe on the phone. Oh, it is, you know. So there's definitely exercises to, to learn. You know, um, we're, we're going to you know, be doing some workshops with, with uh, psychic development, probably like a one, two, three. Um, mediumship, too. 
uh, know what what the sense is, what it means when when uh, you feel that that coolness around you, or you feel that sensation, or you know you feel your hair is going up on end or something, or you think you mm-hmm. see something, you know. So it all those those are all the kind of workshops that I will be you know teaching to try to have people have a better understanding and a better knowing of what's going on in the surroundings around them. Yeah. So yeah, that that will be happening. and that will be coming up soon. That will be coming up soon. Yeah, because I, I know that you've been, I know that you have, you've been out to many events where they have you come yeah. out and talk, and, and yeah. so I, I always want to kind of keep on, kind of keep touch on when, when you're going to have your next event and all that. And I'm glad that you brought up the teas. I actually, um, I, I ordered your teas and I love them. And oh, you're right because you know what's really good is. You're able to really sit in the moment, and yeah. whether you're spending time or maybe it's, you know, someone's read your book and they kind of want to bring themselves back to a part that really meant something to them. They can, you know, sip the tea and just kind of get into that kind of, it's kind of almost like a, a zen kind of state that allows you to exactly. just kind of, yeah. kind of yeah. get back. Because they always talk about how, sense of smell or taste or sound will bring you back to a specific point in time. Like if you hear a song, you remember, you know, dancing with a loved one or, you know, a certain smells will, will do the same thing. And so right. it's nice to be able to have that, to connect kind of back to that moment and with loved ones. Right. Well, they're all natural. They all have lavender. I mean, I had somebody write me yesterday, you know, I need, I can I, will put me, will it help me sleep? Oh, uh, yeah, put you in a relaxed state. Somebody also it wrote me and asked me, will I become a medium if I drink it? <laughs> I was like, no, it's not a magic potion. <laughs> oh, you know, so, I mean, you start ordering those by the gallon and start drinking yeah, them. really, really. <laughs> but, um, no, it's still all natural. They're all, they're just, um, they're amazing. They're just amazing. And, um, everything was channeled. The names, mm-hmm. the, the paragraphs in the back, the flavors, but I wanted lavender in each one of them because I felt that that will put you in, in like you said, like a relaxed state, you know. And, yeah, um, and I do remember you had you had talked with me before the tea reading came out. I was so happy to get the inside scoop on this. Is that you yeah. really you sat and you meditated, and the names came to you from spirit. Yes, yes they actually they did. They all came from spirit, so that's why. Um, I'm really, I, I'm excited, you know, um, they were, you know, it was just a beautiful thought that somebody came up with and, um, and we put our heads together and, um, you know, I'm all about, you know, giving them, these people in the world just, you know, relax and take it easy and take time for yourself and love yourself and, mm-hmm. and take you in moments of, of peace and tranquility, you know, and hopefully that, that will help also. So, you know, I'm here to help, you know. <laughs> Well, and, oh, of course you are. My goodness, you know, and this is why you, <laughs> that's why I love yeah. spending time with you. This is why a lot of people seek your help when it comes to connecting with loved ones that have passed. So yeah. I, I know that your book is available on Amazon and also um, it, as a Kindle, and they can get it at the website. So um, the book, The Hand, Part 1, and it's on part two. Noble also. You know, oh, okay. Barnes and Noble, and it will be um, on Monday. It will be on. Um, we have a Facebook page just called The Hand, and mm-hmm. um, you'll be able to purchase it on that page also. And we're going to kind of keep, you know, uh, that page going and having it, and everybody to join that Facebook page too. Oh and, yeah, I got the invitation yeah. yesterday to join. I joined, and so thank I can you. stay on thank top you. of everything that happens with. <laughs> oh, thank you so yeah. much. And, and, you know, Linda, where can people connect with you also to be part of your community? Let's say someone wants to schedule, um, you know, like a reading with you or an appointment with you or maybe a group session okay. if they're in your neck of the woods. If not, I know right. people have flown you out to do right. what you with them. Right. So yes. where can they connect with you? Okay. Well, first of all, um, like, you know, I've been all over Vermont and Chicago and Florida and all that. Mm-hmm. We're going to be doing book signings, which you can probably start setting up some book signings in all different states all over the country. So um, how they can find all that information out is on my website, first of all, and, um, and on my Facebook pages because we will be posting everything on all of that. Mm-hmm. And um, my website basically will have everything up to date on where we will be. 
and they will probably get emails um, also when they're uh, at a certain place to do book signings. Um, and uh, my website, it's a long one, but I'm at glimdanprog-jatton.com. And then my Facebook page is the same, is the same also. So, um, you know, and we're going to have that information where people can connect to and okay. and learn more okay. about not just you, but the book and and yeah. just kind of get involved in, you know, if if they need someone to reach out to, to connect right. to spirit, or they're just looking to kind of further that spiritual path. Right. Um, or guidance. And, and, and the book does come in a set. Part, part one and part two. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can purchase them separately, but I think that's kind of, you know, that's why we kind of put it in a set, because this way it'll, fit, it'll feed you right into the other book. So, you know, and from one book into my book. So, yeah. So, um, I, well, I, and I, it, it's it's such a beautiful story together. Thank you. So, you want to make sure you. that they, they get that. You know, Lynn, thank you thank so you. much for taking the time to be on the show with us today. Uh, thank you, Miriam, for having me. And like I said, I'm honored, and um, I'm glad we're, we're great friends. I'm glad that we can uh, get that word out there, you know. It's oh, I am, I'm so delighted to not only talk with you and talk with you about your journey and your life, but, of course, share your great book. And everyone needs to pick up their own copy of The Hand, Part 1 and 2. You can order it on Amazon or do like what I did is get it on Kindle, too. Well, that's the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guests and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Thursday.